Hi everyone, um, I'm Soph, although you probably know me as Squeaky Deacon or Squeaky Deeks. Uh, pretty much if it's got a squeak in it, you know, it's, I'm probably involved in one way, shape, or form. Um, so I'm a concept artist here at the DFL, and I'm also going to be talking about cosplay today. And these are our two guests, um, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves now. So I'm Linda. My uh, cosplay alias is Nebula Girl Cosplay. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, but I, I'm here today for, uh, representing Cosplay Repair Station from the Seattle area. I am also from Cosplay Repair Station. I am Bailey. Um, I, my cosplay name is Maple Leaf Cosplay on Instagram. Um, and I was, the, I was a regular staff and the logistics coordinator for Geek Girl Con for the Repair Station staff, so I did all that fun paperwork and emailing. That was great. <laughs> so several people who are probably seasoned con uh, attendees might be familiar with what a costly repair station is. If we here in the Seattle area, we have one particular one, and this is the one that we're we'll talking about today. So my first question is, what is the costly repair station for people who don't know? So the costly repair station is an organization in the Pacific Northwest that goes to several different of the co conventions in this area. So we go to Soccer Con and Emerald City Comic Con and, um, and Geek Girl Con, which is, was just last weekend. Um, and we have, we have a lot of staff members who are knowledgeable in different areas. And we have, we have a lot of equipment, such as sewing machines and hot glue guns mm -hmm. and wig station, all kinds of things. Um, yeah, I've, I've been in there before, yeah. and there was like, they had this glue table, and it was like every kind of glue yeah. imaginable, it's not you could find glue. it. Like, yeah. we, have, we have hot glue, we have yeah. and we have epoxy. Mm -hmm. They have vinyl glues, like, yeah. if you have some kind of adhesive paste emergency, <laughs> they will have yeah. you covered. Yeah, the, the only caveat with that is that um, we only do quick, like, reasonably... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a repair station. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a creation station. Right. Yeah. So, um, construction but, oh, along is with not that. allowed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair is not construction. <laughs> but, that is our uh, slogan. <laughs> uh, you, if you spend too much time around us, you'll hear us say that. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but in any case, regarding glue, though, um, we only have we only deal with glues that can dry in a reasonable amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, which is why we do have yeah. I do a lot of hot glue yeah. and epoxy repairs. Epoxy it takes a while, but it, it really only takes like five ten minutes. Of course, um, so I mean it's a that. convention. Your right. goal yeah. is to try to have this as a well-oiled, yeah. well-functioning machine, yeah. not having people right. clogged up in there for a very, yeah. very like goal, eight hours. The goal of the repair station is to get your cosplay through the rest of the day, and then yeah. you can go home or to your hotel room or something and fix it correctly yeah. Yeah. and properly so that it will last. And then you can go back to the convention. We're just to yes. we're just to get you through the day. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of a lot of the staff members there have been cosplaying for a long time and have made a bunch of different things. So along with with just helping you repair your costume for the convention, we also give people a lot of tips of course. about how to, yeah. how to how to make it better, mm -hmm. what they sh maybe should have done instead to make it last longer, mm -hmm. how, different yeah. things that they can try in the future, things like that. Absolutely. So my second question is, what drew you to the cosplay repair station? Because I've always seen it in the hallway, and I also know that it is a very rigorous training process to get to the point where you can actually work the cosplay repair station. So what made you interested in working at the cosplay repair station? So uh, one of the things that, that drew me in was that I wanted I wanted to like learn mm -hmm. how to fix things and like what what kind of glues I should use for mm -hmm. what. Like I, I wanted that knowledge, and I also mm -hmm. wanted to. Um, of course. I wanted to interact with more cosplayers more. Yeah. Because when I joined last year, I had recently moved to the Seattle area, mm -hmm. and I, like, I had lost, basically lost all my con friends yeah, from, yeah. from back home. So I had to like make new friends and, and meet new people. So it was a good way for me to see a lot more cosplays up close and personal yeah. and meet more people. Yeah. And things it's like something that. that I think about. It's like friendship and adversity. You will never bond so quickly <laughs> with someone when you're sitting next to them in cosplay repair station because <laughs> both of your costumes that you've spent three months on are falling apart. You will never make a faster friend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, this repair station in particular, mm -hmm. I, I've never seen anything like it before. Yeah. Repair, repair stations, I feel like, are a relatively recent mm -hmm. thing. I, yeah. I don't feel like I've seen yeah. them in the past a whole lot. Because it used to be that there was the concept of the cosplay medic. You would have somebody, yeah. a very, very good <laughs> Samaritan, <laughs> roaming around con in a massive canvas backpack with anything that you could think, and, this and they would just set up shop. And not like yeah. a staff member or yeah. anything. It was just a person who would do this. Yeah. 
And although those are still present, and I still think that it is the coolest possible concept, <laughs> I love that idea. Yeah. We're actually having, introducing yeah. that concept. We're having mobile people introduced yeah, soon for next convention. <laughs> yeah. So watch out for medics on the repair. I mean, that is just like amazing. It's like help on the go, but also having like a dignified place where you can just having your costume break can be very stressful and very emotionally yeah. problematic. And having a place where you can just be removed from the crowds, just sit down, calm down, everything's going to be OK. It's just going to take a couple minutes, and then you can just get back out there and go on with this one weekend a year where you can live your dreams, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I first got introduced to it through uh, the UW Costume Club, because mm -hmm. the founder of the UW Costume Club, coincidentally, founded the Costume Club in order to found Cosplay Repair Station. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So she, like, the entire purpose of Costume Club was just so she could make the best repair station she could make. Yeah. And, and it, it and is the it best is, repair yes. station I've ever and seen. <laughs> and it's also very true that the foundations of knowing how to create and fabricate costumes and also knowing how to repair them, they go hand in hand. Yeah. Like, you have to know all of these things to get it together. And you even mentioned before, like, it's not just about helping people, you yourself as a member, mm -hmm. learn lots of new cosplay techniques. Like and they'll give people so yeah. much better in the past. And they'll give here. people <laughs> tips and they'll give yeah. people all kinds of things. Like I remember like I'm friends with several of uh, several people from Cosplay Repair Station. And when they go through the, the trials of learning all of the ropes and everything, they learn so many new techniques because like they'll walk in and their goal isn't always just to repair your costume. They'll also help you along so that when you make the costume in the future or when you do get to go home, when you do get to go back to your hotel room, you can make it even better. Yeah. Uh, do you guys would, have any particular favorite costume repair stories or favorite con stories? So what... It's not so much an interesting story, but like I wanted to give a few examples of um, yeah. like really common repairs that we yeah. do all the yeah. time. Yeah, actually, that's a great that's so, a great thing right. to bring up. Yeah. Um, so a lot a lot of people come in with tangled wigs mm -hmm. is one of the biggest things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one thing that you can do to reduce that happening, um, especially with long wigs, because long wigs are mm -hmm. very get very tangled. Yeah. Um, especially on like the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. um, we see like 10 Mikus every con. Yeah, yeah. like I actually, yeah. one of my favorite memories, or actually one of my most clear memories at the Cosplay Repair Station was there was a, a young girl, like she must have been 12 or under, and she came in with her Miku costume and that she needed help detangling her pigtails. Because mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about pigtails, they just do not want to behave, they got a mind of their own. <laughs> And there's just probably because they swing around. Yeah, I mean, so I have much. to imagine it's just like it's crazy. Oh my god! Yeah. And like I'll see like human beings with hair that long, and I'm just I know. like, yeah, um, yeah. Well, wigs are they're they're terrible. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think a lot of beginner cosplayers don't always realize that, and so yeah. they buy a, a big long wig mm -hmm. because it's pretty or yeah. because it fits their character, and then they don't realize how. Yeah. Quickly, and it's I, bad. yeah, and I think also that there is this misconception that wig hair behaves exactly it like doesn't. human hair, yeah. and it absolutely does not. Mm -hmm. Especially because wig hair is a lot more, I think it's fragile from the ways that I've worked with it because it's like a, it's not like keratin, it's a synthetic material. It For does, you can, yeah, you yeah, can it, melt it, it does very not, easily. it does not behave. Yeah. Um, but there are certain fixes. Um, I know of several. The first of all is using silicone gel. Right. Um, buying specific wigs. Mm -hmm. Like um, there's certain wig companies that have specific brands right. uh, or lines that are tangle free. Um, tangle but resistant. Anyway. Tangle resistant. Thank <laughs> you. There is no such thing <laughs> as tangle free. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but but yeah, I don't mean to interject. Use, uh, yeah. You can use things like silicone spray. Yeah. Like um like there's uh certain kinds of um horse hair detangler which is so weird use, yeah uh. of all things but it, it works great to like help condition uh. like so you can use, spray that on your hair before the convention yeah. and it'll at least reduce the amount yeah. of tangles yeah little. like for those of you who know me from my cosplay page and stuff i actually do a lot of work with horses because we got horses <laughs> um so we actually have like horse shampoo and a little fun story is I thought that, that meant that it smelled like horses. No. <laughs> and I don't, was like, why would anyone want this product? I don't yeah. want to smell like a horse. That was not the product. <laughs> that is not what it is. And it's been quite, in fact, a quite useful and very nice product that does not smell like horses unless you have a very good smelling horse. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was, that was, uh, I can't even think of what it smells like. Bad. It smell like anything? Bad. 
Okay. Bad. I haven't sprayed it enough. <laughs> that it really, I don't know. Yeah, because you, you do want to use it like sparingly because it, it like basically coats the fibers, yeah. and if you coat it too much, it'll get kind of weird. Greasy. Um, yeah, yeah. It'll look like super greasy hair that you haven't washed in like two years. Yeah, so use it sparingly, Which but it's not a good look. look. Right. <laughs> depending, I mean, okay, <laughs> depending on what you want. It could fit the cosplay. Okay. Depending on what you want. It could be. I cosplayed someone who lives in a sewer, and I spilled coke on myself. No one knew. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. that yeah, was fun. yeah. Hmm. Um, In terms of weird repairs, though, oh there yeah, was God. the bread. Um, the bread. The bread. It was oh. so I don't remember which con it was, uh, but someone had cosplayed Attack on Titan, and they've got those <laughs> those sword, they've got those sword things, and oh. I don't remember. I don't. Here. Yeah, I don't remember which character it is, but the Sasha. bread one. The bread one. Yeah, Sasha. Sasha. Yeah, so, so they decided. <laughs> so her bread is her thing. Um, and potatoes. Yeah, potatoes. bread and potatoes. I remember potatoes. Those carbs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they decided to make their swords into long loaves of like fresh bread. bread. Oh, yeah. my God. So they, uh, however, they were having the problem. The bread was kind of drooping over the day because it's, it's bread. Wait, wait, was it real bread? It was real bread. 100% real bread. <laughs> But I was even that okay. I thought it was like the fake plastic bread that no, you can it's, buy for it's like bread. for it's like those tabletop things. They to act went like to Safeway we before just... the con and came back with bread, and they were using it as swords. But it oh doesn't maintain its stiffness for the entire convention. No, it does, and they're like, but it we is need a great it. snack. That's does save that's on the food. thing. It does save they, on concession they money. Want, they wanted to make it so it's just straight, yeah. flat, and sword shaped, so they can't have droopy bread. But they needed to make sure it had to be edible because they were going to eat it after the con. <laughs> <laughs> Why after the whole oh, day? I don't know. <laughs> but that was that was their plan. They were sticking to it. So we were like, okay. <laughs> they had a motivation. They had an agenda. They wanted that bread. Oh so we ended up sticking a wire through it. So we just it just had a little wire core that they could pull out at the end of the day. Mm. But that was one of the weirder repairs. You can have <laughs> some great vitamin wire. <laughs> yeah, get some iron in your diet. Uh, Lots of iron. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, if you guys are willing to, since that was a very riveting, very good story, um, if you guys would like, maybe we could start sharing some more positive con stories. I have one in mind. Um, if you'd like, I could go, or if any of you have anything that you would like to talk. I do think like it was good to go over common repairs, because like, I do remember yeah. wigs. Wigs. Yeah, always, long <laughs> always detangle them from the bottom up, bottom like up a little bottom bit up. at a time. <laughs> like, people start okay. to try to brush it like real hair from the top yeah. to the bottom. Here's, no. here's a little squeak <laughs> secret. Part of the reason I have been doing so many short-haired characters oh. and characters with braids is because I do not want to mess with long wigs. I'm not here Beautiful. for that. <laughs> I'm not done. here for that. I'm done. Yeah. Did my time, homestuck and plugged I, I try to done. I try to avoid ponytail yeah. wigs. Yeah, ponytail wigs are also really They're like really back heavy, so they pull yeah. back a lot. So we also have to help with that a lot. So mm -hmm. um, we end up having to like pin people's wigs in yeah. here and here. Um, yeah, because it's like actually like that reminds me um, a cosplay that I've done a while ago was Elise, and this is probably one of the ones that I'm known for the most, which is of course those ridiculous but very cute <laughs> purple and blonde pigtails. And I thought it was like I was gonna have intense head paints, like any cosplayer, anybody who has ever worn a wig for even less than five minutes knows. Headaches are serious business. Um, and I thought I was just going to straight up die. Because it's like, this wig weighs legit five pounds. <laughs> but something happened that because it was like, like balanced on my head, because it was two of them, it was like perfectly, like perfectly kind of situated. The weight was balanced. Like the center of hair, gravity, and mass was just like Gucci. And it ended up like not giving me that much problems. The only thing that I didn't like about it is that I kept like pulling back, and that is like Ugh, one of my biggest so pet peeves is when I'm like, oh boy, I'm so excited to get con photos back, and the first one you get, your wig is like all the <laughs> way like on the other side of the globe, and you're just like, oh, <laughs> why was I born this so way? I, I was born I had like kind of the opposite problem with my mm -hmm. most recent cosplay, because I have a tendency to trim bangs so that they're just a yeah. little bit too long. Mm -hmm. And I do that on purpose, partially yeah. because I'm afraid of making it too short. <laughs> and then course. also because I know that it'll like come back over the course of the yeah. con. So at some point you hit a sweet spot where it looks right. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just about getting photographers right. exactly when you're Well, on. that's the thing. is when I, yeah. when I, So when I cosplayed Zelda yeah. at Geek Girl Con, I had my, my photo shoot like as soon as I got there. So yeah. it was still like oh, no. no. 
home. It didn't okay, look bad. Yeah. It's still like one. Yeah, and I do but, have to say, like, since I've darn. I've done a lot of photo editing, um, that is like 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 oh my gosh, this is an amazing shot. I can't wait to zoom in, and you cannot see my you cannot see my eyes <laughs> because I am a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that happened too many times. Like you would think, like you would learn, but I am a creature of foolish habits. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, actually sometimes it helps to, if you, you're scheduling a cosplay photo shoot, mm -hmm. it helps to think about yeah. the time of day. Especially also, if, like, like, if it's like, a real, you're, yeah. it's like a really sunny time of the year or part of the country. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Because <laughs> um, when, when the sun's like directly overhead, yeah. and you have direct then, eye yeah, it, yeah, you don't get the best lighting. So you have yeah. to like, go try that's to find shade. Actually, like like that. that's what the golden hour means. When people photographers cosplay mention, like, oh, it's the golden hour. That means that it's sunrise or sunset. The reason they're saying that is because the lighting is both diffuse and it's like at an angle when you're not getting those overhead shadows where you can't see your eyes and it's also evidently extremely unflattering. Which, I mean, for me, that just like, it just bums me out. Like, when I've worked super hard on this cosplay and I get back these photos and it's like my face is like, or like something really, really like, eh. I'm like, oh my god, I worked <laughs> so hard on this. Like, I researched like fabrics and stitchings. And the problem is me, um, and it just like that, that. Part of that is also like I'm not a model, and I think that that's a, a big thing that keeps coming up is that cosplayers are expected to be models, and it's like no, nah, <laughs> nah, dude. no, 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 I'm so yeah. bad. That's yeah. like my worst yeah. part of cosplay yeah. is like posing and like really looking difficult. good. Yeah, like it's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Like different strengths and weaknesses and it, of cosplay, yeah. and like, and that's okay. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we're not, yeah. we're not professionals. If you're doing yeah. it just for yourself, like I, like I don't, I'm not a good actor. I don't mm -hmm. role play. Yeah. So when people like put me on the spot and try to like get me Absolutely. to act like a character, I don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but then I. I'm really good at like mm -hmm. at like weathering things and stuff. That's and actually, I think that, that it's a really, really interesting distinction between the two types of cosplayers. There's certain people who can do photo shoots very, very well. They can make their costumes, their posing, everything look perfect and get that wonderful shot. But they can't do cons because the con uh, traveling is too hard. Costume can't be like put on for too long. And then you have other cosplayers who are like the marathon runners, like they're sprinters and marathoners. Photography, like people who can do photo shoots really well are sprinters. People who can do cons are marathon runners. Like they get in this costume and it's like you are in that for the next 12 plus hours. <laughs> and like that is the way it's going to roll. Um, and like to be able to do that, that is a skill. Like it is just as important as looking photogenic in photos. Um, like being able to do that long haul, it's like, I admire it, honestly. <laughs> like I don't, I don't, ugh. It's like, like my goal at the end of like every time I go into a con weekend, I was like, oh boy, I can't wait to like basically die. I'm just really like, um, <laughs> actually, I do remember, like I I do this thing. Actually, I think most cosplayers do where they have like a meme of the con, where they have like some kind of running joke. And I think that you might remember this one, um, going to the next astral plane. Oh yes. Um, so I once that. at Curacon, oh, every time I, I, I was so tired relatable. or something bad happened, I would say that I would. Um, ascend to the next astral plane. <laughs> um, so, like, I started on, obviously, I was like, oh, my body just ascended to the astral plane. And then, like, two hours later, it's like, you know what? I'm on plane two. And then by the end of the weekend, I was up to plane 25, oh I think. Oh, my God. It was, it was something like, I feel like it's 27, but I don't remember. It was intense. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was intense. Yeah. I, I, would you like to go? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was just going to tell another funny story. About uh, yeah. I was yeah. just, yeah. Funny stories are good. Okay. okay. Here, go first. All right. Now, go. Yeah. So, um, one of the cons I, so before I moved to Seattle, I used to live in Dayton, Ohio. And the, one of the big cons that, like, everyone in the area goes to is Ohio Con, which you hear me talk about all the time. And I think but, that, like, okay, I don't mean to interject, but, like, I know that, like, a lot of, like, kind of weeby kids will say, like, Ohio as, like, yeah, the, the no, way to say it. like, like I can't tell, like, is this uh, supposed to be, like, uh, Ohio? Oh, yeah. Like, so, wait, is morning. it, like, Ohio the state? Or no, so it's like the, it's the spelled like O H A Y A yeah Y O. Okay, I don't know Con. spelling. That which the, is okay. the Japanese yeah. word for good morning. Look at that! I like that. Yeah. I honestly, I think they that absolutely is very did clever. that on purpose. They did. Yeah, I think that, yeah. that is very um, clever, and I enjoy but that. It, it was in Columbus, Ohio, so yeah. it like works. But in any case, um, so that was the big con that I used to go to every year, um, and they had the worst elevators in existence. <laughs> <laughs> they were so bad. Like, and oh, that's a common no. problem at a lot of, of 
the conventions, but mm -hmm. in this one, it was at a Hyatt, I think. Yeah. And um, they had, and it was like a really tall building that mm -hmm. it was in, and that was like the main hotel that was connected to the convention center. Yeah. And that's where like all the staff stayed. Yeah, too. yeah. So, um, so the elevators got very, 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 very full. Yeah. And ran very slowly. Oh no. So and there oh. and. There were people, people coming from, like, the con was on, like, two levels or something. Of course, so there would be yeah. people coming from two, two levels. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like, on the way down, people would come in from the second level and then go down, and then the people on the first floor can't come in. So sometimes, yeah. basically, you would end up waiting for the elevator for, like, an hour or more. I have some it vague memories so about that. Um, yeah, there, there are some yeah. cons where this is a problem, yeah. but I've never been to a con where yeah. it's more of a problem than it was at Ohio Con. But you know, actually, something that I do kind of enjoy, There's there was, like, especially when Vine, rest in peace, was still like a popular thing. Uh, cosplay was to do the uh, the elevator, the little short elevator videos, and I always thought those were super cute where you'd like see them coming down and the glass, like the oh, glass ones, yeah. maybe like dancing or like doing something fun. Yeah. I always like those. those. Yeah. I don't know. Those, and actually, those high yeah. elevators were so bad. Like you would be smashed like yeah. that. Yeah. Actually, terrible. that like brings well, me to, oh, sorry. Oh, you know? <laughs> um, no, it was another something, another question. Uh, like on the topic of like Hyatt, like I'm trying to think about like my favorite con locations. I have a guess to yours. It's probably Colossal Con. <gasps> yes. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> yes. Um, for me, I think that like the hotel where Dragon Con is held is oh, I've like heard that's amazing. Oh my god! Like oh I've seen god. photos of it, and it is like it's it looks a, like it's inside a Gateway, dragon, Lord, right? Yeah. I think we're in a professional conference that's in a Gateway. Oh nice. I'm cool. really excited. But, like it literally looks like it's inside of a dragon. It's yeah. Like, that's just so dope. Yeah. Colossal <laughs> Con. Um, Colossal Con is in Sandusky, Ohio. Yeah. So that was the con that I used to go to a lot. Yeah. And that one's at a water park. <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. And there um, and there's like a there's like a swim up bar and the hot tub and everything. Yeah. It's amazing. And so also good. like something really particular about the Seattle Convention, SakuraCon and Emerald City, is that we the park surrounding the convention center is called Freeway Park. And one of my favorite hobbies is when I see photo shoots and I can see like the concrete pillars, I'm like, you're from Seattle. Yeah, or you took this it's out a, of the It's a very distinct yeah. architecture. Yeah. It's and like, I just think that it's like really cool to try to identify what cons photos were taken at, or like yeah. what, because you can do it if yeah, you. Yeah, there's, the, there's like that gazebo yeah. that's at. Is it Comic yeah. Con? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like everyone. Have, there's like yeah. huge line every year to take a yeah. picture there. Like if you have resigned that much of your life, where you are at a point <laughs> where you can identify what cons. Yeah, like and I've been to I've been to cons like a. Uh, I guess sort of kind of all yeah, over the country because yeah. I went to so many cons in the Midwest and Ohio, mm -hmm. and now I've been to all these yeah, West Coast yeah. cons. And now I'm like recognizing the pictures, and like I, I can recognize any Colossal Con picture, but that's yeah. easy because pretty much cool. every pool photo is taken cool. at Colossal mm -hmm. Con. Yeah, it's like like yeah, you know, like every convention them. space brings their own charm. Like. I feel like the freeway park is really good for industrial characters because it's got like this abstract gas works. Gas works. Yeah. Yes. For that. yes, and gas works. So it's like every specific and location. Like, there's this, this like foresty beautiful yeah. garden thing. Yeah. Because yeah. Like, Although fun well, fun story about um, about the the woodsy parts of freeway park. I think every cosplayer has some story where they were taking a photo, and they said like, oh, also five feet off frame, there was like a something dead or like a heroin oh. needle or something. Oh, no. I have lived that. It is unpleasant, but it does make for some good jokes <laughs> with your photographer. Yeah. And it's sad, but it's still fun. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, it's always fun to see yeah, or I, like to think about like what is happening outside of the photo. Um, yeah, at, um, at OhioCon, there, there really aren't that many pretty locations yeah. around the Columbus yeah. Convention Center, mm -hmm. but there's like this one particular skywalk because there's there's like these skywalks that connect to a lot of the buildings, and there's this one particular one that like it's it's got like these neon lights on the side yeah. of it, and so there's a lot of people get really cool photos, especially if they like have more sci-fi characters mm -hmm. where they're like standing in that hallway. But then, and they, they come out beautiful and amazing, yeah. but then, like, when you're at the con, you're, like, trying to walk through that, and you're like, uh, should I stop? Should I just go? I don't know. Oh, because yeah. Because people constantly taking mm -hmm. photos there. I think, like, the general discretion is, when I see people taking photos of cosplayer, okay, most of the time, the cosplayer is also uncomfortable, and they also want to move. Like, I have been, like, caught in the photography trap, where it's, like, in general, people are nice. Like, that's a generalization. And if somebody's asking for their photo, they're going to feel flattered and they're going to want to stop and take the photo with them. Until 
like some guy comes up and then some guy comes up to him and then like all of a sudden you were trapped in a circle yeah. of phone cameras and that you're like especially this, happens yeah. if you're in a group cosplay because yes. that, like, oh my gosh. that gets okay. so much attention yes like i did like when i do fire emblem cosplay groups it's just like okay i'm not going to the bathroom today because i'm just not going to be able to like move yeah. at all like i'll just step out on the floor it's like okay this is where i'm gonna die this have, is you it. Had, have you had that happen with your reaper yeah, so... <laughs> Your Reaper's really good. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yeah, with my Reaper cosplay. The thing with Reaper is that, surprisingly, his target audience is, like, eight-year-old kids. <laughs> like, every young child that I've met just friggin' loves Reaper so much. It's, like, it's cute, but it's also kind of weird because he's, like, the most objectively evil person <laughs> in the game. <laughs> He's not um, evil. He's misunderstood. He's edgy. I mean, they might make a plot twist later. I don't know. But <laughs> turns out it was a real villain. What? I actually don't know anything about Overwatch. <laughs> I was going to try to like it's pull up. It's complicated yeah. politics. Whatever. I, I, I was going to try to pull up two characters, but I don't know anything about. Know. But like at Geek Girl, even like I was on. No, it's Dante. I was, Dante from Devil May Cry. He's the real villain. <laughs> oh, That's man. the only other video. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, Geek Girl, I was like, I was at repair station doing like an opening shift or something. And then I was like, I have half an hour until I need to go on shift again. So I'll run up to the exhibition hall and try to buy stuff. But then I got up there and then immediately got stopped for pictures. And then I walked two feet and then got stopped again and yeah. again and again. And it's like, I didn't buy anything because it spent the entire time <laughs> taking pictures. Yeah. It's like, I did end up buying stuff later, but it's like, I wasted that entire time taking pictures. <laughs> there was one time, a long time ago now, I did a Merida cosplay. Mm-hmm. And it was like with all my hair yeah. when I was longer. Um, but oh, I remember this story. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's like <laughs> I didn't know you did that. <laughs> no, oh, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. In Freeway Park, there's like trees. There's, some, there's some little hanging trees that are like decent enough to like have have a sit in one of the branches yeah. or something. And I had like I had a bow and everything, and I was like posing like that for my friend because she was taking a picture of me in the mm-hmm. tree. But it was like right next to a pathway, so <laughs> it was all these photographers were stopping by and just like sitting there and taking pictures and then keep going, and then more would come by. So yeah. I was sitting in a tree, staying like this for 15 minutes. <laughs> And I didn't even have, like, a string to rest my arm on because oh. you have to cut them off for that oh, con. No. Oh. So I was just, like, mm. sitting here in the oh air trying gosh. not to move for 15 minutes. I was so tired. Mm. But, or not me, but my friend who did stilt cosplay. It was a yes. really obscure yes. Vocaloid thing. So <laughs> no one, not even the Vocaloid meet, knew who they were. But they were stilts are cool, so everyone took yeah. a picture of them. Mm-hmm. And... We walked from one side of the sixth floor to the other side of the sixth floor. Should, like, should take, like, two minutes, yeah. maybe. Yeah. It took us 40 minutes. <laughs> oh my God. It was really bad. Yeah. I had, I had a friend, I have some friends who do uh, Overwatch cosplays as well, and, they, um, and my friend Andy w- was Soldier 76, and then his wife, uh, Lauren, was May. And her May cosplay was amazing. And then yeah, he, had, uh, he has this gigantic rifle, too. Amazing. So okay, I know that that pun has been, like, beaten into the ground. She says the pun. If there's a pun, I am not <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> Time, damn it. Okay, but sorry, uh, continue. But anyway, yeah, so I, I go to Colossal Con yeah. with them, usually. And, like, was she cosplaying May at Colossal Con? Yeah. Like, she was wearing it at, at Anime Expo in July. She, I don't well, know. Does she want to die? I don't know. Is she human? I mean, there's air conditioning, but yeah. whatever. Uh, it's also a smaller convention. Well, this was before it like got really popular, so it wasn't too crowded. But in any case, um, uh, yeah. So I was like walking around with them, and like mm-hmm. we, we got stopped like literally like every two feet. And I like at some point they're just like they're just like Linda, just just go <laughs> go on <laughs> without us. Like, yeah. Okay. Fine. Go on without me. Um, I think like I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite or like good favorite things that we have about cosplay because I mean in general yeah. I feel like the community is like people are being negative not in general there's certain people but it's like come on always time for positivity always <laughs> um, I think probably my favorite thing about cosplay is how like you have plans and you're like I'm totally gonna do this but then like you make friends and then all of a sudden you're in this group and then now you're in that group it just like yeah how friends and people influence right. you and it's like now all of a sudden you're going to do all these different cons that you never even knew about you're doing this like different series that you didn't know about previously like this different costume like everything like that it just like keeps compounding that you discover all these new things from like finding friends finding groups like having this really nice positive experience so, like you can't really like I honestly cannot tell you probably what costumes I'm going to do this year because it's like, 
Chances are, like, a friend is going to come up and like, hey, do you want to help me with this? I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Um, and it's just, like, it's just a fun thing. Like, it's just kind of, like, you get to make friends, you get to be introduced to new things, and it's always kind of this, like, fluid, dynamic sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, I, I really like making friends at conventions. Yeah. Because then, like, you, a lot of times you don't live anywhere near each other, mm -hmm. but you always come back back for yeah. conventions. So yeah, it's like, that's the I, thing. It's like, yeah, so like some somebody of can like live. Like, I only yeah. see them at conventions, but yeah. when, when we when we meet up, mm -hmm. good stuff happens. Yeah. And the, and they, a lot of times they get me into, they get me into new, um, new cosplays and new fandoms too. All right. So, really so cool. we're going to kind of start wrapping up a little bit. So mm -hmm. if there's any, like, I think that it's good that we kind of finish on like good things that we liked about it. Um, if there are any friends. final thoughts, yeah, it's like, of course, like friends and cosplay community, it's very lively and it's a very good thing to be a part of. Um, mm -hmm. Any other things that you would like to say about Costume Repair Station? Um, anything you'd like to say about yourselves, your cosplay experience? Uh, final finishing thoughts. Um, I mean, the, the biggest thing I like about the cosplay community, at least in recent years, is that it's become a lot more accessible. Absolutely. And a, lo a lot of cosplayers want to help each other and mm -hmm. give each other tips. So if you come, like if you come to the repair station with questions, we can help you. If you mm -hmm. talk to other cosplayers on social media, they'll always, pretty yeah. much always give you tips. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid afraid of making new friends yeah. and trying new things and asking lots of questions. Yeah, that's definitely an important thing. It's like if you have a question, don't be afraid to ask. We and also, don't, don't be afraid <laughs> to ask Google. I cannot stress this enough. Like Google, Google won't everything. take you. Google won't take you everywhere, but it'll take you mm -hmm. like a most, hell of a way. Places. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like with the the bigger crowd of people that are been coming into cosplay. Like you're seeing more inclusion. You're seeing a lot more things going on. Um, I think it's a good thing. I think it's like it's a wonderful thing to watch as this like once niche hobby is all of a sudden blossoming into like <laughs> you can go on like public like mainstream TV and instead of saying this person is costuming this, they say they're cosplaying. I'm like, what the? <laughs> he, he said cosplay <laughs> on mainstream TV and it's not even an anime. It's just like, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't um. know. So, this is, uh, I think cosplay is like very important for like youth. Yes. <laughs> like, because I started cosplaying in like junior high mm -hmm. when I was like yeah. depressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the big mood depression. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. depression, yeah. Uh. Um, and like, like joining anime club was like the start of not being as depressed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, I know I definitely did not have a whole lot of self confidence yeah. and like, um, I know doing cosplay, like, it's helped me a lot through that, like, because mm -hmm. I get to be someone else, even if I'm yeah. not doing, like, the, yeah. the role-playing part, yeah. because I'm terrible at that, but, like, just, like, wearing it, and, like, people aren't looking at me, they're looking at the costume yeah. and what I've done kind of thing, Very like, cool. with my Reaper costume or my Rianne costume, which I also have on there, um, <laughs> uh, on either one of those, they're generally, they're, like, they're very big, not a whole lot of people do them, and especially with the Reaper one, you can't even see my face. Yeah. I love that. It's like, <laughs> I was trying to find you at the Kirkham, it's like, I can't, this isn't going to happen, it's so not going to work. Good. Uh, it was yeah. so good. It was so good. And, like, right. no one, apparently it was good enough that everyone thought I was, like, like a cis male. <laughs> Until I started talking. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is that is my problem too. Um, but I think we are just about but, out of time. Yeah. Um, so I we're going to confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. Good things. So we're going to take a small ten minute break, and then I'll be back, and I'll be doing my female to male cosplay tutorial and demonstrations. <laughs>